Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob saying, I think, I think the AI bubble is getting a wee bit sus. Is that how you use the word sus? I've been hearing the kids nowadays. They use sus. I'm trying to be a cool kid. I think sus means suspect. Please su tell me sus means suspect and it doesn't mean like some kind of transgender furry sex. I can see all my viewers be like, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize Eli the Computer Guy was into transgender furry sex. I mean, hey, good for him, good for him. I don't know why I have to know what he does in his bedroom. Anyways, <clears throat> I think the AI bubble is getting a wee bit sus. And so I've talked about this with how uh, the large tech companies right now are so fucking incestuous in a way we haven't seen in the past. Normal, normally in the past with technology companies, they are just bare knuckles, brutal competitive, like competitive to the point of self-assured destruction kind of competitive, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I actually almost prefer that more to whatever is going on right now. Like you look at OpenAI, OpenAI, you know, is working with Oracle, $300 billion contract with Oracle, working with Google, tens of billions of dollars with them, has a partnership with Microsoft, with God knows how much, you know, is in bed with NVIDIA, right? All of these companies are working this weird thing together, I think to incestuously try to, to build up the AI bubble, right? The idea that AI is the future. Look, everybody agrees that AI is the future. AI is more dangerous than nuclear weapons. So ergo, we have to spend trillions of dollars on AI. And the people pushing back are people like me, and I'm a YouTuber in my basement. I'm like, hey, this is kind of dumb. Like, I'm fine with the technology. The technology has great functionality, it is a great feature set. There is value, there is value there. Just not this much value, right? But the thing is, right, if people like me are saying this is dumb, but then all the, the greatest minds of our country say it's amazing, then I think everybody's gonna go with the, the greatest minds, right? Well, look, look, Musk agrees and Zuckerberg agrees and all these people agree, Eli, you're just a boomer. Ah, for the love of God, I'm not a boomer. <laughs> and this is all stupid. Where I become even more concerned is we're now starting to see more and more weird financial machinations in the AI world. Uh, so NVIDIA <clears throat> is doing an investment, right? NVIDIA, NVIDIA is investing $100 billion into OpenAI. $100 billion into OpenAI. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that a, that a unicorn, so in like 2012, I think is when the term unicorn was created, a startup company that was worth $1 billion. Then a couple years later, they came up with a decacorn, $10 billion. We now, we now have NVIDIA investing a hundred billion, one company investing a hundred billion dollars into another company. That, it's not even a round, right? Uh, OpenAI just closed a $40 billion round. That was an actual round. This is just kind of some kind of weird investor agreement. And so I'm getting really concerned here because NVIDIA's value is all tied up with the AI revolution. They have $4 trillion in valuation basically because of AI. OpenAI is worth $500 billion, obviously because of AI. Right? All of this has been focused into to, um, to AI. And one of the things uh, that gets concerning is what, what happens when people realize that this technology paradigm has plateaued and it's actually not nearly as impressive as everybody's tried to make it out to be, right? The whole idea of artificial general intelligence or super intelligence or any of this kind of stuff. Again, not, not, not nothing, to be clear, to be 100% clear, not nothing, but also not, not that great either. And I think one of the things we're gonna start seeing more and more of is these companies basically working together to kind of boost the image of artificial intelligence uh, to make it seem cooler uh, than it might actually be. And so with NVIDIA putting $100 billion in OpenAI, I thought, so th that was the weird thing, right? So NVIDIA is a $4 trillion company. They put $100 billion in OpenAI. OpenAI then buys $100 billion in GPUs. Right, that's all, that's already sus. That's already transgender furry sex. Like, ah, I'm not, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure about this. But the curious thing is, apparently OpenAI isn't going to be buying GPUs. They're going to be leasing GPUs. 
And so leasing is a very useful thing in the real business world. Uh, that's one of the ways that we used to sell bigger projects to our customers. We used a Marlin leasing back in the day. I don't know, they were great back in the day. I don't know if they still exist. Anyways, what we could do is, hey, instead of spending 10 or $20,000 on this project, uh, you'll go through a leasing program. And basically what was really cool is we got 50% of the full price um, when the customer signed the contract and we, get the, we got the final 50% when they signed off that the contract was done. And then basically Marlin uh, Leasing Company ended up owning essentially all the equipment and they leased it then to the customer so that the customer could get a monthly payment plan <clears throat> and then at the end of the monthly payment plan they paid off they, they simply sent an additional one dollar and there was a one dollar payoff to keep the equipment basically after all the equipment had been depreciated right so there is a reason to do leasing but what becomes interesting here is nvidia that now is giving a hundred billion dollars to open ai not for open ai to buy a hundred billion dollars in gpus but to lease a hundred billion dollars in GPUs. And so basically they are going to be spending monthly payments to lease these GPUs from Nvidia. And I don't know, this starts to feel, this, this really starts to feel more like financial machinations than it does technology. And especially when you hear Sam Altman, he wants to put, so right now he wants to invest $850 billion into AI deployments. He wants to, to push that to $4 trillion, but right now he's keeping it down to $850 billion. This just, this just feels very weird to me. It's just, especially being in the tech world for 30 years now. This, this makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh, NVIDIA's investment in OpenAI will be in cash, so cash, and most will be used to lease NVIDIA chips. So they're not buying the chips from NVIDIA, they're leasing the chips from NVIDIA. And so that, one of the interesting questions there is then where, where does that fit on NVIDIA's balance sheet? Um, if we take a look at this, uh, NVIDIA's massive investment in OpenAI announced earlier this week will put billions of dollars in the coffers of the AI startup to use as it sees fit, but most of the money will go towards use of NVIDIA's cutting edge chips. The agreement between the two companies was big on numbers, but thin on specifics. They said the investment would reach up to $100 billion, paid out as AI supercomputing facilities open in the coming years, with the first one coming online in the second half of 2026. The timing of the build-outs and the cost of each data center remain up in the air. However, what's becoming clear is that OpenAI plans to pay for NVIDIA's graphics processing units through lease arrangements rather than upfront costs, according to people familiar with the matter. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong, uh, who described this week's deal as, quote, a, um, as, as monumental in size, has estimated that an AI data center with a gigawatt of capacity costs roughly $50 billion, with $35 billion of that used to pay for NVIDIA's GPUs. By leasing the processors, OpenAI can spread its cost out, uh, out over the useful life <clears throat> of the GPUs, which could be uh, up to five years, a person said, leaving NVIDIA to bear more of the risk. So it'll be interesting with this, is it, is it $100 billion spread over five years, so that pays for the entire lease? So that's the whole thing, right? Like when you think about this, when you think about investments, so NVIDIA gives them $100 billion to buy $100 billion in GPUs. Now, is it just a payment plan, right? So we give you $100 billion, you can give us $100 billion back straight away to buy the GPUs, or do you spread the payments over five years, which seems weird. The other question here though, could they, could they end up buying more GPUs with the expectation that they'll get more investment from other fools down the, the, down the path to pay for the final five years of the lease, right? So let's say, let's say uh, every GPU costs $40,000. This is $100 billion. I don't know, it's a lot. So let's say you, let's say you could buy, you could buy 1,000 GPUs. We'll just keep it really simple. Let's say you could buy 1,000 GPUs with the amount of money that NVIDIA is giving you. <clears throat> but if you look at the monthly payment and you're leasing over five years, what if you could then buy 20,000 GPUs with the amount of money that um, NVIDIA is giving you 
instead of buying a thousand GPUs, you could lease 20,000 GPUs with the expectation that you will run through Nvidia's money, you know, some portion through the lease cycle, but you should be able to get more money, right? You should be able to extend the runway from other investors later on. And so it becomes interesting there is this allow that that would allow OpenAI to scale up their infrastructure much more quickly. But, but think about this, <clears throat> this could also be a very risky move by NVIDIA to basically to, 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 to pump their numbers, right? So we know, we know NVIDIA is being locked out of the Chinese market, right? Uh, Biden administration, Trump administration have been really just not good, not good to NV NVIDIA for selling to China. Plus there's a lot of other export restrictions, a lot of other stupidity going on with, uh, with NVIDIA being able to sell to the rest of the world. This is hitting their bottom line, right? They, they, they talked about you know, $5 billion in actual losses, $15 billion in sale losses already. That's like $20 billion in, in, loss, in, in, a, in a lost expected uh, revenue going into the future. So they're looking at those losses. So could, by giving OpenAI money to then lease the GPUs from NVIDIA, that would then be NVIDIA essentially making a purchase order to itself to now buy, let's say 20,000 GPUs, a lot more, but a lot of GPUs. So it can then say, we, we, have, now, we have now built and sold right, this inflated number of GPUs because we're now leasing those GPUs to Intel, right, to, to, to open AI. So NVIDIA could either give $100 billion and essentially sell open AI 1,000 GPUs, let's just say, or they can give them $100 billion and essentially lease them 20,000 GPUs. That will then boost their order book, book <clears throat> and basically pump a lot of things. And that, that's the kind of shit that I get nervous about, especially when we talk about how high these valuations are, right? You know, if, if OpenAI was still valued under $50 billion, I still think that's a lot, but whatever. You, you can find the next fool, right? Was it friend, family, and fools? <clears throat> the, the first investment round, whenever I talk about that, friend, family, and fools. So anyways, the idea is you, you find the next greater fool. Right, you, you got an investment round, you burn through the, the, the round, you try to find the next stupider person. <clears throat> the thing is, when the overall value of your company is still relatively small, finding somebody that's able to invest at that smaller valuation is relatively easy. The question becomes, is if, if, they, if they burn through the $100 billion that Nvidia gave them halfway through the lease with the expectation that they will get another tranche of funding in order to pay for that lease. They're already worth $500 billion. <laughs> Fuck me. <clears throat> they are a private startup company that's already worth $500 billion. Like, man, you gotta find a rich, rich dumbass to be able to invest at the next level. Right? So if it's already worth $500 billion, the next time they will go want to get an investment, they want to be worth a trillion dollars. Again, I've talked about the stupacorns, right? OpenAI wants to be the world's first stupacorn, the first trillion dollar startup. That seems like a very nervous proposition to me. And so if they burn through, if they burn through the money, if they then have a down round, or God for Finn, they can't get the next round of investment, not only does that damage them, but now NVIDIA will have God knows how many GPUs on their books that they own, that they're leasing to OpenAI, that OpenAI can no longer pay for. What the hell happens to NVIDIA at that point? So, uh, so yeah. Anyways, this is the, uh, the latest round. And holy hell, AI is shockingly... Stupid. Oh, when we thought we were going to get artificial intelligence, we just, we, I, I guess we didn't think it through enough. I feel like with VR, I feel like with VR, like when I was a kid, there was this movie called Lawnmower Man. We we're all excited about VR. And then we actually got VR. And we we're like, oh, we didn't think through this enough. VR kind of sucks. I feel like that with AI, like we've been so excited to get artificial intelligence. 
Nobody asked whether we should get artificial intelligence. So anyways, anywho, as they say, AI, AI is more dangerous than a nuclear weapon. A nuclear weapon probably can't destroy the United States. <laughs> but this AI bubble, the economic ramifications of this AI bubble, it might, it might. So what do you think about this? What do you think about NVIDIA giving money to OpenAI in order to lease NVIDIA GPUs, not buy? Is this, is this starting to feel more and more like the world of money people and weird financial sh shenanigans versus actual technology? What do you think about all these valuations and these numbers? <clears throat> Does this make you feel good? Again, not, not with leasing. Leasing's fucking fine. Lease, leasing is fine. If, if you run a managed service providing company, by all means, go out, get a leasing partner. A leasing partner will just supercharge what you do, right? There's nothing against selling leases. There's nothing against buying leases. But man, there is a, there is a difference between leasing a $10,000 surveillance system to, to a liquor store and leasing a hundred billion dollars in GPUs to a company that's still burning money, a company that still doesn't know how it's actually going to make a profit. I don't know. Put your thoughts. Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Uh, Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just make sure to be a big dog and do it down there in the comment section. Do you remember SiliconDojo.com exists? We're going to be having our class uh, October 8th at American Underground in Durham, North Carolina. I will be posting that to... Uh, Oh, to meet up and all that and the website uh, relatively shortly. So if you're interested in that, um, make sure to go to silicondojo.com and become a member. And with that, see y'all later.